little about me. I've um, been working with rabbits since the late 1990s. Um, I've been an educator and foster for the House Rabbit Society since uh, 2003. Um, I started and uh, ran the Cape Fear House Rabbit Society in uh, Wilmington, North Carolina for 12 years. And currently I am uh, volunteering with Triangle Rabbits uh, as a board member, as their uh, lead educator, and as a foster. And I have, over the years, uh, shared my home with four megacolon rabbits, uh, beginning with my early days in rescue. So let's jump in with uh, what is megacolon? Um, I guess I'll begin with the definition because it's really rather confusing. Um, some of you who have been around a while may have heard the term cow pile to describe megacolon. Uh, I really don't like that term, but it's kind of sticking around in some circles and can conjure up some kind of strange images. So we'll start out with the definition that's uh, kind of technical, but we'll break it apart. Um, there was an Italian study in 2014 that stated the definition of megacolon as a, quote, marked dilatation of the colon due to a severe dysmotility affecting the large bowel. All right, I know this uh, sounds all technical and confusing, so breaking it down, uh, this infers that the colon of these rabbits is larger in diameter than normal rabbits, and <clears throat> this causes the abnormal movement of substances through the colon or the bowel. And we'll get more into the science of this in a minute, but first let's discuss which rabbits are likely to have this condition. Uh, there are two types of megacolon rabbits. Um, one is genetic and the other is acquired. Uh, genetic megacolon being a condition that's inherited from the parents, uh, as opposed to acquired megacolon, which is a condition that they can develop later in life. Uh, we're only going to be talking about genetic megacolon in this, uh, in this discussion. Um, there's two main characteristics of a megacolon rabbit. Unfortunately, there's no lab test to diagnose the condition. So there's two, two things that we look for. One is their coloration and the other is their stools. Um, so first we're gonna discuss their color. Most of these bunnies have a white coat with some color, uh, usually around the eyes, ears, and just a little bit along the back. Um, probably sounds to you like I'm describing an English spot at this moment. Uh, and I pretty much am. Um, it's a very common breed to have megacolon. They're not your typical English spot. As you can see in the picture, uh, this guy has like a broken mustache where his mustache doesn't go the whole way across his nose. Um, they do not have the full complement of spots going down the back. They may have one spot. They may have no spots. Uh, but they don't generally have as many spots as your typical English spot that you generally see. Um, English spot is not the only breed that you can see with megacolon. Uh, they've been discovered in Rex rabbits, Himalayan rabbits, um, Hotos, and uh, they're constantly discovering other breeds that also have this condition, probably with the intermixing of rabbits um, through the years. Uh, now moving on to their stools. Um, they're generally very large and oval shaped, as you can see in the picture, the two on the left compared to the one on the right, which is a normal rabbit stool. Uh, they can be normal consistency like these two are, or they can be very wet and even surrounded with mucus. Uh, you'll see these stools even in the young rabbit, megacolon rabbit. Um, regardless of their diet, they can be on a wonderful diet. They're gonna look like that because it's got to do with the physical movement of this of the stool through the colon. So it doesn't have anything to do with what they're eating or anything else. It's got to do with the, the physical makeup of their colon. Um, if you happen to see cecotropes from a megacolon rabbit, they're going to be larger and even smellier than a normal rabbit cecal. So these are the classic symptoms of a normal, what we call normal megacolon rabbit. When we say normal, we mean no symptoms, no GI stasis, uh, no illness. Uh, as I said before, unfortunately, there's no lab test for this, um, which makes it difficult to diagnose as far as vets are concerned. They like to see lab tests uh, or x-rays. 
Uh, it is a congenital condition, uh, meaning it's present at birth. Uh, currently, there's no cure. Um, symptoms generally start around age three, uh, which we'll get into, and they get worse as the rabbit gets older. Uh, okay, we're going to move on to some genetics, uh, just because it's pretty interesting. Uh, we won't elaborate a whole lot because it can be a little confusing. Um, in 2010 and again in 2014, um, a group of scientists in Italy were looking for the gene that caused the color spotting in rabbits. What makes them, what makes some rabbits have color and some rabbits not have color? And they found what they called the KIT gene, um, which is also known as the English spotting gene. Um, this is what gives the color to spotted rabbits and even the solid colored rabbits. Uh, several studies have been done and it's immensely more complicated than this, but the KIT gene uh, is tied to both the color spotting and um, a reduction in the number of nerves supplied to the GI system. So it's got both of those characteristics on it. Uh, and this is generally true in genetics. Um, genes have multiple factors involved with them. Um, now there's an allele, uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, called the EN, capital E, small n, allele, which is on that gene, the KIT gene. And when it's present in its homozygous form, uh, which is capital E, small n, capital E, small n, um, if the rabbit has this configuration of the gene, uh, they will be a megacolon rabbit. Uh, this is a simplified version of the genetics of it. There's more involved, but uh, this is basically what produces a megacolon rabbit is the homozygous state of the EN gene allele. Not all lightly spotted rabbits are megacolon, and often if you get a litter of rabbits, you'll have one megacolon rabbit among uh, six or seven that aren't, and neither parent has to be megacolon. Um, there are modifier genes and mutations involved in this process, so like I said, it can be complicated. And in, here's a slide here of the other genes involved, so you can see the capital E, small n, capital E, small n rabbit is a megacolon rabbit. And then you have the spotted rabbit, which is a heterozygous form of the genetics. And then you have the homozygous small e, small n form, which is the solid colored rabbit. So this is a little bit of elementary genetics we'll get into, just kind of interesting as to how the megacolon rabbit um, genetics is involved. Okay, so what is all the impact of this genetics? Uh, here's another slide here before I get into that. Um, just again, a little bit of the, uh, the percentages of um, what the parents are and what the children will probably be in, in the percentages. Um, we use the term Charlie. Uh, it, it's an old term. Um, again, with the mustache involved, um, Charlie Chaplin being the old old time movie character had a mustache. So somebody once upon a time decided that these megacolon rabbits look like Charlie Chaplin. So they named them Charlies. And you may in your research uh, come across that term where people call them Charlie rabbits. Uh, again, named after Charlie Chaplin, the old movie character. So this is how the genetics, if anyone's interested in genetics, this is how the genetics breaks out with the parents and the children from the, uh, from the parents and the inheriting. Okay, now we'll get on to uh, how this all plays out in your rabbit who has megacolon. Uh, these studies have shown that <clears throat> there, there are fewer than normal nerve cells innervating the cecum in the large bowel of rabbits presenting with megacolon symptoms. So you can, you can see uh, if they have fewer than normal nerves innervating their large bowel and their cecum, this is not gonna produce a good outcome. Uh, this abnormality leads to slower movement of the colon, irregular contractions, and a longer, slower flow of contents towards the anus. Um, you'd think of, it, say in a person, you'd think, well, that would make them constipated. Um, and I guess that's kind of what happens with the megacolon rabbit. Uh, it also is why the stools are larger and misshapen. 
Uh, the slower transit time makes the rabbit more vulnerable to, <coughs> excuse me, um, everybody's major fear with rabbits, GI stasis or GI slowdown. Um, also, because of the uh, nerve abnormalities, um, there's irregular liquid absorption through the intestinal wall. Uh, the stool of these rabbits, therefore, uh, tends to be either too loose or too dry. Um, and these rabbits tend to be one or the other. They either tend to be what we call wet gut or dry gut rabbits, um, which means that they're not both. I mean, you either have a wet gut or a dry gut. Um, so if you have a megacolon rabbit whose stools are usually always large, misshapen, and goopy, um, then you would want to treat him one way. And if you have another one whose stools tend to be too dry, then you need to treat him another way. Um, all these abnormalities uh, often cause distension of the abdomen, which may be noticeable. Uh, it'll always be there. Um, any of you that have gone through GI stasis with any of your rabbits, normal or otherwise, do remember probably that their abdomen becomes distended when they're in stasis. Um, and when the stasis is treated, the distension goes away generally. Um, with these megacolon rabbits, um, the distension is pretty much always there. That's another characteristic. Um, the studies also have shown that in these megacolon rabbits, the small intestine, which is the upper part of the intestine, is shorter. Uh, the pH of the GI tract is lower. There's reduced absorption of sodium through the intestinal wall. The heart and adrenals are larger, all probably having to do with less effective metabolism. And the effect of all of these abnormalities is that the intestinal absorption of the food is not normal. Therefore, these megacolon rabbits need extra nutrition. And one thing I've noticed with my megacolon rabbits over the years, and discussing with a lot of other people that have them, is they have a very hard time keeping weight on. And when you rescue one that hasn't been diagnosed or hasn't been treated or is older, they're just pitifully thin sometimes. And again, this is because they have a hard time keeping weight on because of these abnormalities in their GI tract. Okay, moving on to, uh, you think you might have a megacolon rabbit. Uh, the stools are large. Uh, they have the right coloring. Uh, what can you do? Now, before I go on, this picture that I want to show you here is, a, is an interesting, he doesn't look like your typical megacolon rabbit. Um, he's actually called a Gepard, Gepard Rex. And he's a Rex rabbit, and they've been very specially bred because they're beautiful, um, multicolored Rexes, and they actually, are quite prone to having megacolon. So they, their genetics has megacolon in it. I just wanted to make you aware. So if any of you have a rabbit with this coloration, um, they, even though they don't look like your typical megacolon rabbit, all white with uh, dark rings around their eyes um, and the broken mustache, this is one breed that has been shown to have megacolon, Gepard Rex, um, which is another interesting finding. Okay, anyway, back to what we can do. If you're pretty sure you have a megacolon rabbit, but you're just not sure what to do at this point, um, don't worry. Uh, it's very manageable, and you've done the first right thing by recognizing it. Uh, again, it's a congenital condition, and with the right vet, uh, you can definitely manage it. The first thing you want to do is get connected with the most rabbit-savvy vet you can find. Um, Megacolon in rabbits is still not well known in the veterinary world. Progress is being made. Um, the larger exotics veterinary clinics obviously are gonna be more up on this than, than the others. Um, I live in a smaller community. Um, my vet is a, is a really excellent rabbit vet, but his first comment when I took my Jimmy into him was that he had heard of megacolon in cats, but not rabbits. So it was a learning experience for him, and he fortunately is the type of vet that will listen to me because he appreciates my experience. And so he's been very willing to learn, and hopefully um, you can have that good experience with your vet. I will provide references to scientific articles here that you can give to your vet if you need to. 
Um, it is a little bit more difficult to find articles for us bunny people. There are a few out there and we'll be providing uh, references for those as well. Um, first steps to management. If you believe your bunny is megacolon but he is not sick, having no incidence of runny stool or GI stasis, the first thing you need to do is just tighten up his diet. Um, if you're used to feeding him some fruit treats, uh, you want to cut that out. Uh, they don't do well with fruit. Uh, you want to eliminate sugar from their diet. Uh, you want to put them on an extruded alfalfa pellet. Um, extrusion is a process by which pellets are made that makes them more easily digestible. Uh, they don't tell you this on the package of pellets, unfortunately, so you may have to do a little research. Um, there is one out there that I use. Uh, it's called Supreme Science Selective. It's a British made pellet, but they're widely available here in the United States now. They have an alfalfa version. It actually has a picture of a megacolon looking uh, bunny on the, on the, uh, the bag, uh, and I have found them to be excellent. There may be others out there. You just might need to um, talk to the company and find out what their process is to make them. Uh, you wanna give them lots of hay. Once again, hay is the most important food source for these rabbits also. Um, if they can tolerate green vegetables, uh, you want to give them. You want to place the emphasis on herbs uh, like parsley, cilantro, basil, dill, uh, lettuces. Uh, you don't want to give them any kind of vegetables like kale, broccoli, cabbage that can cause gas. Uh, these bunnies have enough problem with gas already. Uh, we don't want to encourage any additional gas. Uh, if they have the, the wet stool form of megacolon where their, their stools are just constantly loose, um, they may not be able to tolerate greens, so you may not be able to give them greens <coughs> um, unless they have like a bacterial infection that you get under control, and then you can try to reintroduce greens, but we'll go into that in a little bit. If you have what you suspect is a megacolon bunny, that you have had GI stasis incidents with, or you have runny stool that you can't seem to get under control, and you have been in the vet's office with your bunny with these stasis incidents, uh, but your vet hasn't mentioned it as a, as a condition, um, you want to bring it up with your vet and go armed with articles. Uh, your bunny's life could really depend on it, as megacolon rabbit stasis is different than other rabbits' GI stasis due to their sluggish GI tract. A much more aggressive approach to stasis must be taken. A vet familiar with megacolon will put your vet on a gut motility medication most likely. If they do not mention a painkiller at this point, I would definitely discuss it, as in my personal experience, gut motility meds uh, can be pretty strong. They can make the, the gut contractions strong, which you want to move the contents through, but they can also be painful. And a medication like meloxicam can make your rabbit much more comfortable. Um, if you have a rabbit with megacolon markings and he has frequent incidents of loose or runny stool, and you just cannot figure out why after tweaking his diet, have your vet do a thorough workup for bacterial infections, especially coccidia. Bacterial infections have an easier time popping up in these rabbits as the food has a slower transit time through the gut and provides a great medium for bacteria to grow. And just one more note about this. Um, if you do like a fecal test and they say, no, they don't have coccidia, sometimes coccidia takes two or three different tests before it's diagnosed. So if your, gut, if your bunny doesn't get any better, you may have to have a several different tests for coccidia done because it can, be, it can be a nasty condition and you wanna just really make sure it's ruled out before you uh, give up on that. Um, we have come a long way in our understanding of megacolon and rabbits since my very first megacolon foster rabbit, Carmela, back in 2004. Uh, she was a rescue. She's up here in the uh, upper left picture. Uh, when I first rescued her, um, up along her backbone, she was just skinny as a rail. Um, the terminology back then was largely cow pile. 
and it was just sort of treat them for stasis incidents until they died of stasis, which was usually around age five. Uh, she ended up being adopted out to another rabbit rescue person. She was bonded, and uh, I don't remember at what age she passed, but she lived a good, happy life. Um, I've had the pleasure of the companionship of four megacolon rabbits over my years in rabbit rescue. Carmela was the first. Um, Roswell was my second. He's a dwarf hoto with the classic large fecals. He's in the middle of, of, up on the top. Uh, he never had any classic megacolon symptoms. He died at age five. Uh, he had horrendous problems with bladder sludge and multiple treatments uh, never resolved it. Uh, he never had one incident of GI stasis. Um, nor any symptoms of GI stasis other than the large fecals and the, and the coloring. Uh, he was a, a hoto. Jimmy, uh, down at the bottom, was my third megacolon rabbit, and uh, he was rescued at age three, having already had some symptoms of megacolon uh, and GI stasis, and he taught me all I know about megacolon, basically. Uh, keeping him alive required vigilance, but armed with information, and I was constantly searching for information with him. Um, it was quite doable. Um, he passed away from liver disease at age nine, so I was able to keep him alive uh, for six years. Um, he lived a happy life. Uh, it, it was in and out of stasis, but um, knowing what to do, I was able to be very vigilant and keep him from staying in the vet hospital. I was able to mostly treat him at home. Um, my current foster, Alvin, uh, he's top right, uh, was a baby when he was found outside spring 2019. He's now a uh, robust seven pounds. He's big and fat and healthy. Uh, he has the classic megacolon markings and the classic stools, but he's totally healthy. I mean, he runs around and eats very well. Uh, he's not three yet, and it's generally noted that symptoms begin around age three. So I've got my eye on him every day uh, and just pay attention to him. And especially when he's shedding, you want to make sure with these bunnies that you keep them very well brushed. You don't want, uh, don't want fur in the gut, you know, clogging things up and causing additional stasis problems. Uh, so in summary, if you have a megacolon rabbit, being proactive is the only way really to prevent these life-threatening bouts of stasis. You want to learn to read the signs that your rabbit is undergoing a GI slowdown. Uh, these would be less food intake, fewer stools in the litter box, any change at all in the stool size or shape, any change at all in their behavior. And you want to talk to your rabbit vet about steps you can take at home to ward this off. If you don't have an emergency clinic near you, if you live in a smaller area, um, Talk to your rabbit vet about maybe making an emergency contract with them. Sometimes they'll, uh, in cases where you have an, a bunny like this that could go into stasis and become an emergency, uh, they'll make a contract with you where they'll treat you um, on off hours if necessary. My vet will do that with me. Um, one easy step I took with Jimmy when he was first starting to show symptoms of a slowdown uh, was syringing unsweetened coconut water into his mouth, uh, 10 to 12 cc's at a time, up to three times a day to hydrate directly into his gut. Uh, this was highly effective at stopping any oncoming um, stasis incidents once I got familiar with his signs and symptoms. Um, so your, own, your knowledge of your own rabbit and quick action can keep them healthy for, uh, for many years. Um, that's probably the biggest key that uh, I can tell you. Um, we have some references that are coming up next. Uh, these are the references that I used. Um, we will make them available to you. Uh, and I have some thanks to My coworkers, Jeanette and Michelle, for helping me with this talk. Um, two 
megacolon fellows, Rob and Danny, uh, for helping get me through megacolon with my own bunnies. Um, and now, if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And I want to thank all of you for staying and listening to me and just wanting to let you know that if you have a megacolon bunny or if you think you do, uh, it's truly a manageable condition. It's been a learning experience over the years. But if I can do it, anybody can do it. So I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Okay, and I'll um, read some of the questions that came in. Thank you so much, um, everyone who has shared questions. I also want to send um, a big thank you to Jeanette, who has also been, you know, helping us out behind the scenes today. So um, someone did have a question about, and I know this focused on the genetically transferred um, megacolon, but if someone has a rabbit that is later in life, like nine years old, um, and mm -hmm. suspects megacolon, should they talk to their vet about it? Yes. Yes. It can, from my understanding, it can accompany um, other disease states, um, kind of go along hand in hand with other disease states. Um, I'm not real familiar with what they are, but yes, I would definitely talk to their vet. Great. And another one um, has to do with, you know, rabbits who are experienced with megacolon. If um, there are referrals that um, veterinarians could have to, to talk with some who may be doing more research in that area. Say again. Oh, if, if we are aware of any particular veterinarians or researchers doing that, that, that do a lot with megacolon that could be good references for people who have veterinarians who aren't as familiar with megacolon to connect with about it. I am not. Um, I wish I was. Uh, I'll, I'll actually research that. Um, I, you know, my biggest source of information um, was not vets. It was the uh, genetic megacolon uh, in Bunny's Facebook group, um, and I, they're based in the UK, um, and this is one thing I have learned, is that I tend to find information wherever I can find it, whether it's here, whether it's uh, in the UK. The UK, they like to think they're way ahead of us in rabbit medicine, and I think in some areas they may be, in other areas they may not. Um, they would probably dispute me on that. But I think that there's good vets on both sides of the uh, Atlantic. And um, so I will um, see what I can find. Um, there, there's some good vets in California that are working with megacolon that I know. Um, but I don't know of anyone that has done a whole lot of research into it. I just, it's just not a, it's just a topic that, you know, they just don't seem to have delved into. Um, as far as I can tell, I would love for somebody to. And of course, the list of references could be a good starting place for the vets too. So they could even try to contact maybe some of the people who published them. Um, oh, absolutely, and, absolutely. Yeah. And the Association of Exotic Mammal Veterinarians may be something that your veterinarian is already either a member of, and if not, you know, some of the membership there that see rabbits regularly may be good resources for them as well. Mm -hmm. um, off the top of my head too. Um, someone had a question about um, if there is a projected lifespan um, for a rabbit with megacolon. Um, not anymore. Uh, like I said, in the early years, it used to be five. That, that was what I was always told was your rabbit won't live past five. And now that we've got new treatments out there, we've got the gut motility medications um, that they can pretty much stay on for life. We've got, you know, jumping on GI stasis the minute you see the first signs. Um, we've got, uh, you know, all sorts of other little tricks up our sleeve that we can do. Um, more and more megacolon rabbits are dying of other conditions other than GI stasis, which is the goal. Um, the ones I see that are dying of stasis are the ones where it's recognized too late. 
So my, if, if there's the biggest takeaway I can give people from this, it's be proactive. Uh, don't wait till the bunny, you know, hasn't, hasn't eaten and uh, you've been doing things at home, giving them gas drops, like everybody always says online, um, you know, for a couple days and they're sort of eating, but sort of not. You know, you don't want to wait until you would normally wait with your, with your average rabbit in GI stasis. You want to jump on it like three days sooner than you would wait with your average rabbit. Um, and if you do that and you're very proactive, um, you can, and I know this from Jimmy, I, this is my own personal experience. Um, he died of liver disease. Um, so you can, you can absolutely keep them alive until they die of cancer or, or something else, which is the goal. Um, they want to, you want them to have a life like everybody else. And more and more, I'm hearing from people where that's happening. So yes, uh, but it's, it's a lot, I won't lie. Um, you know, you, I'm, I'm scrutinizing litter boxes and, and, um, you know, there's a lot of hovering involved. So, uh, there's that. Great. Thank you. Um, there was another question that had to do with, um, with megacolon rabbits is, do you think there's more of a concern in them going under anesthesia or having surgery? Uh, yes, because they react very poorly to stress. Um, now, I, we don't ever recommend against spay or neuter. Um, as long as they're very healthy, and I mean, if I've gotten a megacolon rabbit in to rescue before that's not been in the best of conditions, and you would want to make sure that they're extremely in the best shape possible before you would want to put them under anesthesia for spay and neuter surgery. But you don't ever want to um, subject them to a stressful condition that you don't have to. Um, they're, they're just much more susceptible to, to stress. You know, anything that's going to cause an average bunny stress because of their sensitive GI tract, they're going to be affected more by stress than anyone else. And anesthesia is a huge stress. Um, now, if it's a life-threatening situation that they have to go under anesthesia for, uh, you know, I mean, my Jimmy needed tooth trims and that was light anesthesia, but he always came through them fine. Um, Roswell, who had uh, megacolon, had major bladder surgery for his bladder sludge, and he survived that fine. So, you know, if it's if it's something that needs to be done, yes, um, I would not hesitate to recommend you know having them go under anesthesia. But you always want to think real carefully before you subject them to anything stressful. Thank you. And we've gotten several requests um, for the Facebook group that you, you mentioned, if we could share that um, information for those who have megacolon bunnies and would like to join. Okay, um, it's called Genetic Megacolon Bunnies on Facebook. And Genetic. it's a, it's a secret group. You need to be, um, I'm a moderator on the group. I can't let people in. Um, the uh, administrator is Danny Tomlin. She will ask people questions. Um, she's pretty strict about, she doesn't want people getting in if they don't have a megacolon rabbit um, or think they have a megacolon rabbit. But that's a good thing because um, they're very, they work very closely with you to help you with your rabbit. So they, they actually, that group, um, I, I give credit to for um, saving Jimmy's life. Uh, they pointed me in the right direction. I was able to take their information, share it with my vet. He verified whether or not the information was right or not. It was always right. Um, the, the, moder the, ad the administrator of the group, um, very, very, very knowledgeable about rabbits. She wrote an article for the um, uh, British magazine about megacolon that I don't think is available here in the US. I wish it was. Um, I have a copy of it, but um, very, very knowledgeable person. So I wouldn't recommend her if, if, if it wasn't. And I have never been steered wrong by that group ever. Uh, there may other be a megacolon, there may be other megacolon groups out there. I can't vouch for them one way or the other. I don't know anything about them. 
great. Thank you. Um, and here are just some, some, there's been several questions that I think we can kind of combine into one. Um, are there certain foods or items that you would recommend or you have found helpful to keep on hand as someone who has lived with um, rabbits with megacolon? That could be helpful. Um, yeah, one thing I keep on hand, and I've been giving it to Alvin, um, plantain is, is one thing that apparently really helps keep their gut moving. Um, it's, it's that weed that you see out growing in your yard. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, you can just Google it and you'll go, oh yeah, that's what I see out in my yard. Um, I get it. We, I live here in the Southeast where nothing grows because it's all sand. Um, so we don't have plantain growing. I'm sure you do, Michelle, in the mountains in Asheville. But um, it's just, if you have a, a yard where you're not spraying with um, pesticides, um, you can go out and pick your plantain and feed it to your rabbit. Uh, dried plantain is even better. I order mine online um, and it's supposed to help keep the gut moving. Uh, there's another, uh, and I was gonna look this up before I came and I forgot to do that. Um, there's there's another type of and I don't keep this I could go in the other room and dig it out and look you know look for it and tell you what it is um, I don't really keep it on hand but there's a a pellet that you can keep available that you can give to seriously ill megacolon rabbits that can help you know move their gut along but there are some various like herbs and plants and things like that that I try to keep available, but I, I just, the strictness of the diet is, is the absolute best thing. I don't ever give them any fruit at all. Um, if they're, if they're begging seriously, I just hand them a stick of parsley or something like that. Um, I just try to be really, really careful with, with their diet and, um, Great. Um, and do you have a favorite source for ordering plantain online? Uh, I do. Um, it's a web, it's a Facebook page called Elliot's Awesome Eats. E-L-L-I-O-T-S. Uh, she's a lady in Dayton, Ohio, and she has, must have a fantastic garden because she grows all this stuff herself and dries it and sells it. She has all kinds of different dried, uh, dandelion, uh, all kinds of stuff that she sells. And how often do you give plantain? Is it um, regularly or is it when there's symptoms? It depends on how he's doing. Now he's doing great. I mean, he's, he's doing fine. Uh, so I don't give it very often, although he absolutely loves it. And um, so if there's a couple of days where his poops maybe don't look as nice and big as they, as they usually do, Alvin tends towards dry gut megacolon, which means his poops tend to be a little bit dry. So um, I, I want to make sure that he's not going to, they're not going to start getting smaller and smaller and smaller, which means that he could end up going into stasis. He also has a tendency to shed constantly. So, um, and his fur is the type that won't let me, I can't brush it. I just have to kind of wash my, or wipe my damp hands over it. So, um, I think that's what's causing this. So I, I'm giving him the plantain more regularly this summer just to kind of, you know, keep things moving through his gut. I'd say I've been giving it to him twice a week, just a handful. Great, thanks. Are there any other supplements that you tend to use some with people, your rabbits? Some people use the Oxbow digestive tabs and that's certainly not a bad thing. A lot of people recommend those. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just looking through. Um, yeah, well, this is, you know, um, an interesting question. Are you aware of, again, I mean, knowing we're not vets, but are you aware of other reasons that a rabbit's poop could look like megacolon poops? Uh, if they do, um, I would take them to the vet. Uh, 
if they don't have the markings of megacolon, I mean, this is just me, um, I would think it could be acquired megacolon, in which case it would, you know, and you would want to, at that point, start looking at, I mean, it's always got to do, if the poops are that way, it's always got to do with functionality of the gut. And the vet's going to know that, I would think, if they're a good rabbit savvy vet. I mean, my vet, when he examined Jimmy, he could actually palpate his 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 gut and he could feel you know the poops in his gi tract and he could tell that they were larger and definitely he could tell they were definitely not normal so even though my vet early on knew nothing about megacolon he would know by by just examining jimmy that he was not normal in that area so you know you would want to take your bunny with abnormal stools to a vet they would examine Hopefully they could, you know, feel the colon area and feel that the poops weren't normal and they would do some testing after that to see what was going on. But without the markings, I don't know, although I shouldn't say that because we had that Gepard Rex that has sin since been shown to have, you know, megacolon. So I think there's still a lot of work to be done in the field of megacolon. I think they're constantly developing new, finding new megacolon rabbits out there. Um, so it's it's kind of a, a a new developing exciting if I I'm not exciting for the rabbits maybe exciting for scientists um, field that we're still learning a lot about. Great. Have you encountered any information on whether probiotics are helpful to make a colon bunnies? Uh, There was one that I used for, I didn't come very well prepared for this. Um, it's been a while since I've had a sick, sick megacolon rabbit. Um, Fiberplex is one that has been recommended. Uh, that's the name of the pellet too. There's a pellet called Fiberplex. They're not that easy to find. Again, this is UK based stuff. I think there's a there's a website in the US. It's a it's a I think it might even be a breeder website called All Things Bunnies. Mm -hmm. And she sells that stuff. Uh, there's a uh, uh, now the person that's just saying that about the Castor Rex that developed megacolon, I think the Castor Rex is the same thing as that Gepard Rex that we had in the picture. So that would make sense. Um, yeah, Fiberplex comes in a pellet form and in a liquid form, and it's like a probiotic pellet and um, liquid. And I think if you look up All Things Bunnies uh, website, I think she sells it there. That's the only probiotic I know that's recommended for megacolon rabbits. None of the others, uh, like Benabac, those I don't think are, are effective. Thanks. Um, and we've had a couple questions about pellets um, because, of course, we, we read lots of things about not giving alfalfa hay to adult rabbits. Um, right. But the alfalfa pellets for um, megacolon, have you encountered any um, information about why that's beneficial for them? Um, just that they need the additional protein in the alfalfa pellets. Alfalfa pellets are higher in protein. And you know most normal rabbits don't need that. Now they don't. You don't give them alfalfa hay. You give them Timothy hay, but you do want to give them the alfalfa pellets because they need the additional protein for nutrition. They need it for weight gain. Great. That's a great distinction too. Thank you, Paula. Yeah. And someone um, also. This is interesting. Thank you, Anna. About um, Sherwood was trying to develop a test for megacolon a few years ago. Um, yeah, you're aware of that or heard her? Uh -huh. Never heard anything more about it. Okay. <laughs> so it, maybe it, worth it, asking it, sure what about that. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, I would like to hear more about it if they, if they, you know, where they're at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know it sounds like the megacolon can mean different things for different rabbits. Um, do we know if there's any averages for the number of times a megacolon rabbit would experience GI stasis? Oh no, I, I wish there was, I wish there was. I mean, I hear from people in the group that their rabbit is just constantly in and out of stasis. And then there are others where 
they're hardly ever in stasis. Um, you know, some of them is just constant, 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 and then they, they just can't take it anymore. And they just, I mean, some of them, there's some data to show that females tend to be worse than males with it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's just anecdotal data or if that's really truly scientific data, but it seems like if you have a, a rabbit that has a really bad case, you'll know early on, and that rabbit sadly just won't live all that long. Um, but again, I think a lot of it just has to do with the person being proactive. I mean, Jimmy was pretty bad from when I first got him. And I just had to, I mean, he lives right, you know, in my family room and I walk by him 50 times a day. And I, I mean, I was like the ultimate hovering mother. Um, and if, but I'm retired, I don't work. So I was there hovering, you know, all day long. Um, if I was working and had three kids, like I did it earlier in my life, you know, he might've died sooner because I wasn't paying as much attention. So it just all depends on so many different variables mm -hmm. as to, you know, how they survive. And the, the longer you do it, the better you get at it. So mm -hmm. I've had, unfortunately, a lot of experience with rabbits dying, of all sorts of things. So you get pretty good at it. Um, so we had a couple other questions that I think um, are, are kind of good. Well, one is just um, a refresher, like what was the name of the pellet that you, you have used um, again? Um, Supreme, I think it's Supreme Science Select. Great. And and we'll make this... they, they make four different kinds of pellets. Mm -hmm. And I think it's called Adult Rabbit Formula. And it's the one with the lop-eared rabbit on it. Um, to all the people that are asking about how to get into the Facebook group, um, if they want to email me, my email address is paula at trianglerabbits.org. Um, Great, and we'll put that in chat too, so that yeah, that's fine. Um, I can anybody that wants to get in, I can uh, I can direct them directly. I can give them a direct link to the email address of the person that needs to screen them. Great, and so yeah, Thank yeah, you. and I'll, I'll warn Danny that she'll she's about to be bombarded with requests. <laughs> But that's fine. Um, you know, we, we want to help everybody that we can with a, with a bunny that has these issues. Excellent. Um, fine. That, that's fantastic. Um, do you know if there's any um, difference in are males or females more prone to, to having megacolon? No, there doesn't seem to be. It seems to be just the straight genetic uh, uh, inheritance uh, of that particular gene. Um, okay. Like I said, there seemed there was a discussion a while back that it seemed like the females uh, seemed to suffer more from the disease once once it popped up. But uh, all of mine, except for my first one, have been males. So I don't, you know, I don't know. Um, but I don't know. I haven't seen that anywhere anywhere uh, specific. It would be inter an interesting study for a graduate student. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's just, there, yeah there's just, and the other interesting thing that I've observed over the years is that it seems like there's more and more of these rabbits showing up, which is why I feel the need to get the word out as to what their condition is, because they're showing up in rescues and uh, they're being adopted out. So I feel like it's important for the rescues especially to know about the condition so that they can inform the adopters as to what's going on so that the adopter doesn't think that they're just getting your average ordinary rabbit and then have them going down a road of constant stasis and vet visits and ultimate death and pain and suffering for the family and the rabbit uh, when it might not be necessary. Yeah. Great. Okay, so there is another question that I think is a good clarification about um, when you're talking about gut motility um, and having the, that added gut motility treatment. Is that a regular thing or just when they're in stasis, the importance of it for megacolon rabbits? Gen generally, um, the feeling among the vets that I 
talk to is once you start a treatment on these bunnies, you don't take it away. So if they've been deemed needing a gut motility treatment, they're going to need it. Um, the feeling being that if their gut is dysfunctional enough that they need help with the medicine, they need help. I mean, you don't want to, I mean, it's not like a regular bunny whose, whose gut is normal and they just need help over this little hump that they've, you know, gotten themselves into and then everything will go back to normal. These bunnies will never go back to normal. So once their gut is so dysfunctional that it's stopping all the time, it's not going to go back to, you know, even where it was before. So, and the other thing I wanted to mention about gut motility drugs is that uh, there's different gut motility drugs. Um, and some of them work on the upper intestine and some of them work on the lower intestine. And this is a lower intestine disease. Um, it's not a small intestine disease. It's a, it's a cecum disease. And if you look up I don't want to get into rabbit anatomy, but um, metoclopramide or reglan, um, which is what they usually give when the rabbits in GI stasis, is an upper gut motility medication. And that's not the one that's effective for um, uh, megacolon. What you want to give for the megacolon rabbits is uh, one called cisapride, which works on the lower gut only. Um, so that's another thing that's good to be aware of. And again, you have to discuss it with your vet because it's prescription only. Your vet will know this. Um, my vet knew this. Um, one over-the-counter medication that was used sometimes was Zantac because it's also a lower gut motility medication, but they just pulled that off the market because it contains some cancer-causing materials. Mm -hmm. So that's no longer available to humans or animals. Um, so but cisapride is the one that uh, hopefully your vet will put your bunny on if they need a gut motility medicine. And then yes, it's, uh, and you generally do have to, uh, if you have a bunny that needs it, that's going into frequent stasis incidents, you, you pretty much have to increase it over time to, you know, keep the bunny functional. But, you know, if you do that, um, the bunny stays happy, the bunny stays active. Uh, it's great. Great, fantastic. And there's a couple of questions that may kind of go hand in hand, and I think it'll probably be the last ones that we can take today. Um, and that is, are there signs that a rabbit early on might, you know, have a, a hard time with, with megacolon? And is there any evidence showing that by, by feeding them right, by, you know, um, you know, avoiding the fruit and giving them a that good high nutrient pellet, if it essentially helps um, the, the rabbit have a have a better time, you know, managing a megacolon. Um, well, I mean, that's always going to be the best for the rabbit to give them the best diet possible. But if they're prone to super bad megacolon. Um, you know, you can have them on the best diet possible and you may not be able to keep them from having serious disease. I mean, a lot of it just depends on the genetics of the rabbit, you know, how many nerves are affected, how, how the rabbit system handles it. But definitely, definitely, definitely you want to make the diet as, as, as perfect as possible. Excellent. Well, I want to thank you again, Paula, for, for sharing this information with us. And hopefully this gives all of you some more resources. If you do have a megacolon rabbit, you know, at least some more topics to talk through with your vet. Um, sometimes I think, you know, by being more informed clients for them, I mean, our vets are our best partners in caring mm -hmm. for our rabbits. So the more information we can bring to the table and you know, for discussion topics with them, the better chances I think we all have in, in caring for our rabbits. So thank you all for joining us. Um, it's almost noon here. Um, actually, it is noon now, um, Eastern Standard Time, and glad that you could join us for this hour. And um, 
thanks for doing something for your bunnies and for bunnies everywhere by trying to learn more about this topic and and so we can when we know more hopefully we can do a little better for our rabbits right so thank you again paula and thank you everyone. pleasure bye bye